Right. Okay. I'm going to admit everybody. And I, hopefully you can see everyone. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We're just waiting to, uh, to log everyone in and then we're going to start our talk. Nice to see everybody. People should put on their camera so I can see their beautiful faces. Hi, Melina. People are still connecting. Hi, Susan. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? Well, thanks. Well, thank you. So we're just adding everyone. What time is it? Right. We're going to start on the dot. So uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I, uh, I just wanted to sort of give you a rundown of what's going to happen this morning. We're, we're going to have a talk. And if you have any questions, please drop it in the chat box uh, over here. I'm going to write here. Um, so write it here, and then I'm going to read it out so that Rithika can, um, can answer. So without further ado, welcome, Rithika. Rithika is, uh, do I pronounce your name right? Rithika or Rithika? Yes, Rithika. 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 Rithika is the founder of Oli, and Oli has all these gorgeous essential oils. And um, Rithika, are you going to tell us what we're going to learn today? Yeah, I'll take you through. Uh, so we'll do a little bit of what are essential oils, how they are made, uh, how to use them, uh, what to be careful of, what not to be careful of, and uh, what to look for when you're buying oil, where to buy. And uh, we'll also go through, I mean, we'll do Q&A but also we'll go through the more popular oils if there are questions about them and uh, see what they're good for, how you can use them in your everyday life, like lavender and peppermint and the more popular ones. Great. It's a lot of content. It's a lot of content, so. Uh, yes, and would you like people to, do you want me to kind of stop you and ask you a question or we'll take the question and answers later? As or What we'll do is we'll break it up after every section uh, or the broader topic. We'll stop by. We'll stop and see if people have questions and address them right then and there, because okay. that might be easier for uh, everybody. Perfect. Well, then Perfect. let's let's start because it's already ten. So let's go. Perfect. Thanks, Susan. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. I'm really excited. Uh, thank you for taking the time to come and attend. When uh, Susan asked me if uh, I could do this event, this is the first time I'm doing such an event. So I thought there'll be ten to fifteen people. Uh, and then she told me that there are 150 who signed up. So I was like, oh, no pressure at all. <laughs> but uh, anyway, here we are. Uh, I'll give you a quick background about myself and my company. I'm Ritika, and I'm the founder of Oli, uh, which is a fairly new Singapore-based uh, boutique brand that we launched with the idea of wanting to help people better harness the power of essential oils. In our product offerings, we have 100% pure essential oils that are sourced directly from farmers, distillers, producers around the world. And we also have started introducing a growing range of uh, utilitarian products that you can use in your everyday living with essential oils. The hope is that slowly but surely, uh, people can replace various chemicals that you use every day in your home uh, with equally effective natural uh, solutions. So anyway, today let's talk about essential oils, where they are, where they come from, how you should use them, what the popular ones are. I'll try and cover a little bit about everything. We keep this informal. If you have questions, feel free to ask. You can use the chat function or you can just unmute yourself and ask a question, it's all good. Uh, I can't see everyone because my screen's got a bunch of things. I can't see everyone on video. So if you do put up your hand, I'd I might miss it, so like, feel free to just ask or uh, leave a question on chat. But before we start, I just wanted to also get an idea of uh, the group I'm talking to today. So uh, if you can maybe use the chat function, but how many of you use essential oils actively and sort of have an idea of what they are, but just looking to know more? Yeah, a hand up will do as well. I see you, Malin. Malin? Malina. Okay, uh, and do we have a lot of people? Yeah, I see some more show of hands. 
do we have a uh, how many people have never used essential oils want to use it but are intimidated by the topic don't know how to proceed don't know what to do okay all right so there's a little bit of both so we'll keep it basic and uh, we'll go from there so what are essential oils and how are they made uh, essential oils are highly concentrated natural oils that are extracted from plant material if you look at botanicals if you look at flowers plants leaves um even bark of trees where you know you scrape a little bit and the sap and the smell sap of the smell all of them have some or most of them have some sort of a smell some of them have a very strong smell like flowers which are the obvious ones some of them stink some of the leaves if you look at kaffir lime leaves if you look at uh, even tomato leaves a lot of plants uh, herbs of course uh, they have a smell so all of this smell when a plant material has a smell there is some level of oil in there it may be a lot of oil it may be a little bit of oil but there is oil in there and that oil is essentially what we're extracting and that's essential oil and that's what contains the aroma which is why essential oils then basically encapsulate the aroma of that plant material and also some of the properties of it um most essential oils are produced now how are they produced most of them are there are about three or four different processes that are used the most popular one is uh, steam distillation where steam is passed through the botanical in a closed still so what they do is if you look at lavender flowers they take all the lavender flowers uh, they're already small so they don't need any chopping up um, they're all in a container and they pass steam from the bottom of the container now the steam goes through the botanical and steam rises up we know how it rises up so steam rises up and then it goes through a cooling system so that steam is then condensed to get the liquid on the other side is condensed to the liquid this liquid is not just water that came from the steam but also now contains oils from the botanical it passed through and that liquid is uh, it's left to sit the oil and water separate and that oil is then is your essential oil um there are a couple of other ways of production as well so for example with citrus oils uh, they cold press the the oil is in the peel uh, of the fruit and uh, that's cold pressed to get the oil now how do we use essential oils we're good so far sorry i'm just looking at the chat to see if uh... okay i think we're good uh, how do we use essential oils um the essential oils are not a new product um while uh, in uh, while essential oils in households is fairly new the oils itself have been used for a long long time even uh, especially in at the industry level so um, until recently uh, the largest consumers of essential oils were the flavor and fragrance industry and by flavor i mean if you look at your packet of chips it might say that it's a uh, garlic and onion chips but if you look at the chip it's just a slice of potato right you don't see any garlic on it you don't see any onion on it how does it have the flavor because there are flavoring companies that will take garlic oil onion oil and a bunch of other um, spice oils or herb oils or whatever and uh, create flavors which is then used to flavor the chip so this is the flavoring this is like a simple example of a flavoring industry there's also fragrance so your perfumes your chanel your pradas um all of them have uh, so fragrance is created with a blend of various aromatic materials a lot of them are essential oils then there is also synthetic fragrances which we're not going to get into at the moment if you look at your home care products uh, personal care your floor cleaner your room freshener your deodorant your um, i don't know some uh, your moisturizer all of them have a smell to it whether the smell there's some sort of a fragrance in it and there's a good chance that there's some essential oils in there as well candle and soap industry the um, incense industry um beauty skin care product we spoke about alternate medicine pharma and of course now the aromatherapy world so all of these guys use essential oils extensively and it's a very versatile product you can use it in various different ways so um let's talk about uh now let's come down to aromatherapy which is the which is the world we know of which is the essential oils where you buy a bottle you buy a bottle of essential oil like this at home and you use it at home what are the ways you can use it the first and the most obvious one is to diffuse the oil so add a few drops of oil to your water it can be multiple drops of the same oil or you can even mix different oils there 
there are blend recipes very easily available on the internet. And even if you follow, we put out, uh, Oli puts out a lot of them on social media. Uh, we have some on our uh, bottles as well. You'll see a diffuser recipe in there, a quick one for each of the oils. Just so, you know, you want to make your room smell nice or uh, if you have pets and babies and generally want a little bit of purification, if you're trying to focus because you're doing some work and you're not able to focus, some oils help you sort of give you that little bit of uh, focus if you're trying to sleep better. So there's various reasons to diffuse oil. I have pets at home, so uh, I need to diffuse oil very often just to keep our sanity sometimes. I have two dogs. <laughs> um, and uh, even if you're not diffusing, then there's the one uh, in your environment. So a drop of lavender on your uh, pillow to sleep better, some cedarwood oil, which is the natural pesticide. So I, I, what I do is I put some cedarwood oil on cotton balls and then put it in my jacket or cold uh, winter wear clothes and uh, replace my mothball. Put that stuff away. That will make sure that you don't get silverfish and other sort of creepy crawlies on clothes. Uh, a couple of drops of lemongrass in your mop water, just to give your house a little bit of a better clean. Um, the other one I use a lot is uh, eucalyptus oil in my steam inhalation. So eucalyptus is really good for clearing up a stuffy nose. Um, when you when you do some sort of steam inhalation, just drop a, just put in a drop of eucalyptus in there, and you'll see how drastically better it is uh, to make you feel better. And uh, so these are the simple ones. Then if you have the time and inclination for it, you can make DIY, there's lots of DIY recipes out there. The DIY sprays for cleaning your tabletop, for glass, uh, citrus oils, especially lemon, orange, are very, very good for helping remove residue left by stickers. So if you're reusing a jar and you want to get rid of the, I don't know, a wine bottle or a jar, you're trying to get rid of the sticker. These oils are very good to just, you know, sort of get rid of that grease that's left behind or even grease on your on your gas stove. Uh, there are many people who even go the extra mile and make soap, shampoos, toothpaste, laundry detergents, uh, stuff like that at home. Uh, so you can add essential oils to make them smell better and also to uh, use them for the actual natural antimicrobial or cleaning or whatever properties of the oil that you're using to the functionality that you're using. The other one is uh, for your skin, for your body. So you can add a few drops to your moisturizer if you like the smell of it or uh, for maybe some skin healing properties that it has. You could add, uh, the one popular one is tea tree, add a few drops of tea tree in your shampoo and give it a shake for people who have certain, it helps with certain kinds of dandruff. Um, a little bit in your hand soap maybe, uh, you can even make balms, body butters, uh, hair oils, body oils to replace cream. And uh, it, as long as you're diluting it right, you can make roll-on for direct skin application, uh, perfume, or even the roll-ons can help you with like if you have a headache or if your child is sick and you want to just generally give him or her a chest rub uh, and things like that. All of this that I spoke about are uh, again, very broadly, but these are all external uses of essential oils. Uh, now there's a whole topic of uh, internal. And uh, when we say internal, I know that, I don't know, how, uh, have you guys watched a, a series on Netflix called Unwell? Uh, the first episode is about essential oils and uh, it's, it's interesting, you should uh, watch it. But uh, with internal now, if the essential oil is, people always ask me, can, is this food grade? Is this, is, can I consume this essential oil? So if the oil is 100% pure and natural, no adulteration, and if the underlying botanical is edible, you can absolutely use the oil in food. So uh, lemon, lavender, cinnamon, uh, ginger, sandalwood, uh, all of this stuff is food grade, eucalyptus. But food grade also means that you should know, what, the trick is to know how much to use and uh, use it in moderation. You can add a few drops of lemon, ginger, cinnamon, cardamom, any of these oils in your cookies or your cake batter. And uh, I promise you when that stuff is in the oven, your entire house is gonna smell like, if you've added cinnamon oil, your entire house is gonna smell like Christmas. Um, and with the festive season coming up, that's something I highly recommend you try if that's a flavor that you like. 
Uh, one I use a lot is oregano oil. Um, it's very, very powerful and uh, very good for your body. It has, it has amazing properties. So uh, for those of you who like street food, and as an Indian, I love my street food. I don't care if it's going to make me fall sick. I, yeah, I'm not risk averse at all uh, on the, in that regard. But if you feel like you've eaten something and you're feeling a little funny or you, you're going to get a stomach bug or you have a stomach bug, one drop of oregano oil in a bowl of yogurt uh, and the next day, just so much better. It works like magic. Uh, for me and for my friends and family, this is, of course, you have to try it out to see if it works for you, but uh, it works like a miracle for us. But it's also important that one drop in like a cup of yogurt is going to make your entire yogurt like bitter because that's how strong it is. So it's very important to make sure that you use just that very little. You can add essential oils to your cooking, to your cocktails. There's plenty of recipes available online. But uh, just make sure that the oil dilutes. Uh, just checking chat. I see something. Real. Okay. Yeah, oregano oil. Am I pronouncing that right? Oregano, oregano. Uh, so uh, what, what is important is to make sure that the oil mixes well in the medium of choice. Uh, you can add a drop of it to honey or to yogurt or to, um, like you said, in your cooking, and that stuff will mix. But I, I see a lot of uh, opinions out there where they say, add a drop of the oil in a glass of water and drink it. Oil and water don't mix. So the oil is going to float on top. And when you have, there's going to be that one sip where you get the oil and the rest of the glass is going to be no oil. That oil is very concentrated. You don't want it going through your very delicate digestive tract um, because it's going to, you, you might feel the burn immediately. And it's not just the burn, it's also toxic uh, for later on because it's, it's that. It's one thing to eat one orange. It's another thing to eat, I don't know, 200 oranges in one shot, right? So that's, uh, that's the difference. Um, but so the, uh, we, and we'll talk about, as we go along, we'll talk about individual oils a little bit um, and take questions as well. But first I want to talk about safety and precautions a little more. But before we do that, uh, do we have any questions? We can pause a little bit and take some questions. Yes, we do. We have, uh, Adele is asking, I heard silver fish. What is the essential oil to diffuse? Cedarwood. Cedarwood. Cedar okay. Yeah. Um, and also Michelle's asking, which is the best oil for headaches? Will there be a list of oils that, what the properties are good for? Would, would you so, have to, uh, can you share us a list later of like I all can send the, a list. Yeah. I can send a list. What I'll also do is point you to our blog where we're doing detailed articles on each of the oils. So to your question about headaches, uh, Michelle, uh, I think the answer is, uh, while there are some oils that help a lot, for some people peppermint works a lot, for some people lavender works a lot. I think first, the first uh, question I would ask is, what is the root of the headache? It could be a headache because of a, a stomach issue. It could be a headache because you're dehydrated. It could be a headache because you've been out in the sun so much and you didn't, uh, or it could be a headache because you're hungry. So I think it's important to know what is the, or it could be a headache because of sinus. If it is sinus, then eucalyptus oil is really, really good. I said steam takes steam in inhalation. If you're dehydrated, no oil is gonna help you. You're gonna to have to drink that water. Um, or if you're hungry, you're gonna to have to eat some food. So uh, I don't think there's a one magic remedy for headache kind of an oil. Peppermint seems to work a lot. So what I would do is if you have a roll-on bottle, uh, fill three fourths of it with a carrier oil, like it could be olive, coconut, almond, jojoba, whatever you have with you. Um, and just put a couple of drops of peppermint. If you don't even have a roll-on, what you can do is in the palm, like a shortcut that I use is in the palm of your hand. Just put some olive oil, uh, which is something that we easily have at home. Drop a drop of peppermint in there, give it a rub. Uh, so you, you've already diluted. So like a teaspoon of peppermint with a, a, teaspoon of, a teaspoon of carrier with like a drop of peppermint. Give it a rub and then you can give yourself a massage or just rub it on your temples or things like that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. 
Uh, another another uh, question. Oh, this is for me. So some oils are cheap and some are expensive. So I've purchased like a little tiny, tiny lavender uh, essential oil and it was like $50. So I couldn't believe it. And so which one should I like, you know, and then there is options of buying it for $20. And, and is that like the, the type of quality that I'm getting? Do I get a poor one for the 21? And do I get a really good one for the 51? Is that how it works? So we'll cover that in a later section about, okay. uh, uh, but basically the price is, while the price matters, you don't want, you don't want to buy an oil, a lavender oil for $5 uh, for no. sure. But there's, uh, but then again, you might not, depending, I'm, I'm assuming it's a 10 ml bottle. I'm assuming it's a bottle this size, which yeah. is actually lavender. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't see the point of paying $50 for it either. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Okay, uh, great. Um, another question from Lisa is, what is frankincense oil used for? Frankincense, I love that oil. What's so that? I don't even, I've never heard of that before. Frankincense is a tree. Uh, it grow, grows in uh, the Somalia. Actually, it's it's even in uh, the Middle East, but it grows in desert in deserted areas, and uh, it the bark. What they do is they make cuts on the bark of the tree, and the sap flows out, and they leave the sap there to dry overnight, and it becomes sort of hardened crystal. And the next day they come in, they pluck that sort of crystal or they pick it out. And then they separate it for quality and they distill that uh, crystal. Actually, I thought I had, no, I don't have it here. Um, they distill that to uh, make oil. So frankincense actually has a very rich ancient history because it's used in the Middle East a lot for burning, for they say it weighs away evil. Uh, it, it has various links to different religion and cultures. It's used heavily in perfumes for its earthy, musty, piney sort of a smell. It's lovely. Um, it's antimicrobial, so it kills harmful organisms like bacteria, viruses. It's good as a pain relief. Um, I know that some people dilute it and rub it around their tummy if they have a tummy pain. It's anti-inflammatory. It reduces inflammation swelling. Uh, it helps soothe digestive issues like IBS. Um, so it's actually very versatile oil. Does that answer your question? Did you have specific sort of uh, questions, Lisa? I think she's uh, okay. mute herself. There's another question though. What can we use to make a diffuser from Brian? Okay, you said the same. What can we make, what can we use to make a diffuser from? Yeah, that, that's her question. What can we use to make a diffuser? I suppose the uh, diffuser is, I mean, what I know of a diffuser is though I have one for Muji. Is that what you call a diffuser? So there's different kinds of diffusers. There's one way you can buy a diffuser. It looks like a, it's a ceramic pot with a place for a tea light candle. What you're essentially trying to do is open up, so essential oils contain volatile compounds. So one is you warm it up a little bit, you fill that cup with water, and you drop a couple of drops of oil in there and you burn and there's the tea light below and it will slowly warm up the water and as it warms it up, the aroma of the oil will spread around the room. Uh, if you don't want fire and water, I don't, I have a child in the house who's extremely uh, curious. Uh, there are electric diffusers where you can add the water and a couple of drops and then you can sort of cover it and turn it on and it will continue to diffuse. You can also, there are natural diffusers. So you can take a pine cone, if it is a smaller area like a bathroom, and if you have a potpourri, potpourri is essentially some, a kind of a diffuser because you have dried leaves, dried flowers, and uh, they have some sort of a fragrance in there. You keep it open and that fragrance is slowly released in the air. It's not as strong, I wouldn't use it for a big room uh, because it's not gonna be as effective unless you're keeping multiple ones in different parts of the room. Uh, but uh, ceramic, uh, so people use, sort of like, assuming this is a ceramic plate, right? So if you, you can, something that will absorb the oil, because if it can absorb the oil, it can uh, leave it out. You can uh, reed sticks, which is why reed sticks are very popular, because in a jar, you can put the liquid in there and the reed stick will slowly absorb it from one end. It will transfer through the reed stick and from the other end, it will sort of keep uh, putting it out 
in air. Okay. Um, sorry, can I just ask, um, sure. Rathika? I was just wondering if you're using reed sticks, like what yeah. you're mixing with the essential oil? So I would, uh, you see, I think the thing with reed sticks is you want a thin oil. You don't want it too thick. So I would use a carrier oil. Uh, honestly, I'll have to Google that and see because I've not really made a reed stick diffuser. But you, would, I would think that you want something not too thick. So you don't want to put in like, I don't know, a lot of patchouli oil or castor oil or something that thick. But something that's really thin, maybe almond oil. Uh, and because I know people who add water and oil, but water and oil don't mix. So unless you're adding a little bit of soap to just help them emulsify better, that might be an option as well, but you might have to keep refilling it. I would try a couple of things and test it out or just look up and see if there are any uh, sort of popular recipes that people recommend online. Thank you. I see another question about patchouli. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, what is patchouli? patchouli? Patchouli is a leaf. It is uh, grown in Indonesia, in the islands of Sumatra, Sulawesi. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's again, it's a very beautiful oil. It's used in men's fragrances a lot. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, we, uh, so it's, it, I think patchouli is used for treating skin conditions. Uh, dry skin, cracked skin, dermatitis. Uh, I know that uh, people diffuse patchouli just to improve their mood. If you're feeling low, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling a little depressed, patchouli is really good too. It's a very calming, very soothing, very, it's a nice thing to diffuse when you're meditating. Uh, it's also, I think it has, uh, if I remember right, it has uh, insecticidal properties. So, Antifungal, antibacterial, I think. And uh, I know some people who even cook with patchouli, but very, very little because it has a smoky uh, sort of, it has a smokiness to the smell. It's also right. a thick oil. It's a, it's, a, it's a thick oil. Unlike peppermint and lavender, it's more like the sandalwood and the Buddha wood uh, kind of an oil. Okay, uh, there's a question from Jan Lee. What oil can I use for wet eczema? I have been applying, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. I have been applying tea tree oil neat to my finger to dry it up. Is there a better oil or a way of dealing with wet eczema? So first of all, I would not use uh, any oil uh, neat on my finger. Even I think sandalwood is one of the mildest oils from a use uh, purely on skin regard. And I would not even use sandalwood directly. I would dilute it with something. Uh, so tea tree, 100% do not use it on uh, open skin because it's not going to help you. Uh, eczema is, uh, again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not someone who can dish out medical advice. Uh, I don't, I think eczema is a lot more complicated because again, like I mentioned about the headaches, you have to figure out the root cause of the eczema, where it's coming from. Is it an allergy because of contact with something or, but if you're talking about uh, reducing symptoms of eczema, uh, I'm honestly, I don't know because I, I'm very cautious about uh, recommending essential oils on wet eczema, like on, I'm assuming that eczema means you mean that there's a wound and there's like liquid flowing out of the wound, right? Yeah. Is that, is gin, yeah, is gin would, around you? Yeah. yeah, no, I would not. Oh. Uh, yeah, I would not use uh, any oil unless it's extremely diluted. Uh, you can try tea tree oil with, uh, when it's diluted, but I would, honestly, I would consult a doctor first before I do anything. Mm, it sounds very painful. Because also it reacts differently to different people. Yeah. Eczema is such a, uh, it's, eczema is such a science, like it's, it's crazy because no one, you know, it also has different stages and severity and all that. So it's, it's, it's very, it's, it's, I mean, I wanted to talk, I wanted to do a talk about it, but it, we couldn't find an expert to, uh, to, 
they all it's have hard. different really they all have hard. different opinions about it so it's very yeah. hard yeah I've tried, but i feel I've for tried, jan um, sorry uh, yeah i've tried some uh, essential oil blends on uh, some of my friends who had eczema and uh, some work some of them don't because again the i think the root cause of eczema is what you need to figure out uh, for some people it's stress related for some people it is a skin allergy for some people it's something else so it's really different so i think oh. let's uh, with that let's get back to uh, our next section and then we'll break again for pick some questions is that okay with you yeah right. perfect so the next one i wanted to talk about is safety and precaution again we were talking about neat tea tree on uh, an open wound so how much oil do you think is produced from say a truckload of a botanical material say a truckload of peppermint or a truckload of lemon very very little actually uh, to give you an example it takes about 5 kilos of fresh lavender flowers and lavender flowers are like so can you imagine what 5 kilos of fresh lavender are it takes 5 kilos of fresh lavender to make 15 ml of lavender oil this is 10 ml 15 ml is maybe like this much more um that's how concentrated these oils are it takes about 75 to 80 kilos of peppermint leaves uh to make 1 kilo of peppermint oil that's uh so just imagine you know when you're cooking you use a couple of peppermint leaves when you're cooking and we're talking uh 75 80 kilos of mint leaves for 1 kilo of peppermint oil that's how concentrated these oils are so while they are wonderful wonderful products to use and they have many uses but they can get very dangerous very quickly if they use them correctly i had a, a customer once who came in and uh, she's um, she's a candle soap maker so she uses essential oils every day she uses it for her kids she's a very uh, she's a very active user of essential oils she came in and uh, i was making some blends for her and she was smelling them and then when i brought her the lavender she said please don't show me lavender i'm allergic to lavender and i said i've never heard of someone being allergic to lavender before why like that is so strange and she said that when i started using essential oils i loved lavender to a point where i would use it 10 times a day all the time everywhere in my house on my body everywhere so much that now my body just can't stand lavender and the moment i get anywhere close to lavender i have breakouts so uh this is a self caused allergy to a great extent but uh it's uh, you have to be careful about how you use the oils and they can get dangerous always 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 dilute your oil moderation is key remember less is more so if you think that peppermint is good for a headache one drop of peppermint making that five drops will not make the headache go away that much faster it just will not uh, so adding a extra few drops does not mean that it's more effective like i said if it's a roll on fill about 3/4 of the bottle with your carrier oil uh, it could be almond jojoba coconut um olive anything um, evening primrose samanu there are many carrier oils out there and put about 3 or 4 drops of the essential oil give it a shake let it settle for a bit and then roll it on to whatever you're using it for if it's not strong enough you can add a couple of drops you know it's always easy to add a couple of more drops uh if you're following a recipe chances are the recipe will accurately tell you how many drops you need to use and again how many drops vary from oil to oil some oils are weaker you can go a little more some oils are very strong and you need to use that just that very little uh and also it depends on what you're using it for if you're using it like a lip balm or because you have a sinus you're using something to roll onto your nose you want it to be very you want it to be much more diluted than if you were using it say on your heel for cracked uh skin because uh, and so that's what i mean by the dilution ratios differ and it all depends um so that's one thing to be careful about ratios dilution uh, the other one is we spoke about steam distillation about how essential oils are produced and i briefly mentioned uh, citrus oils there's another process that's much uh, so the, we, uh, we'll talk a little more about cold pressing uh, basically if you uh, look at citrus skin they have oils on there so if you squeeze the citrus skin a little bit you find that sort of the 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 smell the smell that comes out and sometimes it even sort of comes out to your face right there's oil in there lime lemon sweet orange bitter orange grapefruit tangerine um clementines mandarins bergamot all of these are citrus oils 
and the peel is uh, crushed or either uh, it, it is machine crushed to extract the oil. So when you crush the skin, you get that water and oil and then they separate and that's the oil that is used. So there's no cooking that has happened. By cooking, I mean the steam distillation, like passing steam. So it's still, it's just cold pressed oil. Uh, the properties are different. Most of the citrus oils are phototoxic. Uh, by that, I mean that if you apply a little bit onto your skin and you go out in the sun, you're going to get a sunburn uh, much faster. You're going to get a sunburn much faster. You're going to have some sort of a skin irritation. It could be blisters. Uh, you could have skin problems. So you don't want to, it's very important that you don't use a, a leave-on application that has citrus oils in it, that has cold pressed citrus oils in it. Uh, the two citrus oils that are not phototoxic are sweet orange and tangerine. And I think mandarin as well, if you look it up. But the others, so lime, lemon, any of this, you don't want them in your hand sanitizers, you don't want them in your lip balms, you don't want them in your face cream. Um, and even if you, even if the added has to be that little bit, but if you see a lemon face cream, as much as you like the smell of lemon, I would not use it. Um, um, even, uh, what else? Hand sanitizers, lip balms. Yeah, so anything that you're leaving onto your skin that will be exposed to light. It's okay to use a face pack with it. Just make sure that for the next hour or two, you're not going into sunlight. So if, you, if it's a night cream, that's okay, but just make sure. Uh, phototoxicity is a real thing. Some other oils have a mild burning sensation when you touch them, like have it here? cinnamon oil. Cinnamon oil, this is 100% pure cinnamon oil. If I open the bottle and uh, there's a little, because I use this oil, uh, there's a little bit of oil over there. By mistake, there's a chunk, I'll touch it. If I touch it, uh, I'm going to feel some burning on my hand and I didn't touch it now, but if, uh, and at some point, I'm going to find myself feeling a burning sensation over here if I haven't washed my hands immediately. So uh, be careful when you handle essential oils um, and make sure if you get, if some that gets on your hand, you wash your hands with soap and water before you touch your face, your nose, your eyes, your children, any of that. All right, where to buy your essential oils and what to look for. So there's no dearth, Susan, to your question earlier. There's no dearth of sources for essential oils. You can look online, in shops, in malls, and with each day you're finding more and more sources to buy these oils. But how do you know oil is pure? How do you know what to look for? While there's no way of knowing what's exactly in the bottle, unless you do a lab test, I find that there are some signs that, uh, definitely encouraged me to explore further. At least look up reviews of something, if not uh, buy the oil upfront. So the first sign is read the label. It should say 100% pure essential oil, not fragrance oil, not essence oil, not aroma oil. It should actually say 100% pure essential oil. They could be making a false claim, but at least, uh, I mean, if they don't write that, if they write fragrance oil, diffuser oil, essence oil, um, any of these words, it's not 100% pure. It should clearly list ingredients. If it says not food grade, if it's say an orange oil that says not food grade, that's not pure, it's definitely a it, it should clearly list ingredients. So your ingredients must say whatever, this one says cinnamon essential oil, and it should only have that one ingredient in there. If it, or it, it will either list the botanical it, it will say lemons or it will say lemon essential oil or it will have the scientific name. The other thing is look for the scientific name. Most uh, genuine uh, sellers of essential oils will list the scientific name of the botanical on the bottle. Not mandatory, but it's something that uh, I find is often there. Uh, in some cases, you'll find them mentioning the extraction process, whether it's steam distilled or cold pressed. Thing is, if they know how it's made and if they're putting out that information for you, uh, then chances are they're trying to be genuine. They're trying to show you that they are genuine and that's a sign. Um, I find that their genuine sources are usually transparent about their information. If it's a small brand or if you're in a position to be able to reach out to them and ask for test reports, they should be open to sharing them with you. You, you may not be able to read the test reports because they might be in a language you don't understand. Um, it could be numbers that don't make sense to you, 
But uh, if a brand doesn't respond to you, if you ask for test reports, I would be concerned and I would not uh, buy them. Check the bottle. It has to be a dark glass bottle. No matter what high grade of plastic it is, uh, plastic will leak into the oil because it's such strong, uh, it's such a strong liquid that it will leach some of the plastic out. Do not buy any essential oil that's in plastic. Uh, if it's transparent glass, also I would avoid it because these things go through oxidization very quickly. Uh, it's very important to store them. If you look at them, I have the label covering the entire region to minimize the amount of light that can get to the bottle. It's also a dark bottle. Do not store them in a place of direct sunlight. Try and keep them inside a cabinet. Um, so the lesser heat and the lesser light that they're exposed to, the better it is for the oil. That's, uh, yeah, that's what to look for. And uh, there are different grades of oils as well. You'll hear some people say therapeutic grade, food grade, uh, pharma grade. There's a, the thing is essential oil industry is the least regulated industry at this point in time. Given that uh, people use it as alternate medicine, it's actually not at all regulated compared to how pharma is regulated. So uh, it's very easy for, so a lot of these claims are marketing claims where uh, I'll create our own word, my own word and say, because I'm trying to sell it and I'm trying to stand out. Um, I'll say this is, I don't know, boutique grade or whatever. But uh, therapy, typically when people say therapeutic grade, that means that it is pure out of the botanical with nothing else done to it. So you want to make sure that it's 100% pure. You want to make sure it's 100% natural. Um, your common sources of this oil are, you've heard of Young Living in doTERRA. Uh, to your question about price, Susan, wh while they are, uh, their quality is very, very good. I know these companies personally. I work with them on my wholesale side of the business. We sell oils to them. We do business with them. So they're very, very good. But also, they are an MLM model. Uh, it's a their sales model is such that you know you can be a you can be a dealer and uh, or you can be a, a representative, and you can be selling that oil. It's like a, it's promoting how guys to run that business uh, to make some money. Uh, but the way it works is the profits go up a little bit. Everybody up the chain gets a little bit of their profit, and uh, because of that. Uh, their marketing budgets, their operational budgets are huge. So they are going to have to price that lavender at the $40, $50 mark to be able to make any real money. So uh, don't buy the $5 lavender. But I would, there was a time when the only option of a good lavender was the $50 lavender. But today there are actually many other options. There's lots of small brands, big brands that give you better price uh, products at a better uh, at a more accessible level so i personally would explore that but again it's a, that's a decision for each of you to make at this point i'm also going to exercise speaker privileges a little bit and shamelessly plug my brand if that's okay uh, so like i was saying that uh, so our main business is uh, production and wholesale of essential oils it's been in the family, uh, it's been a family business for three generations now. And uh, we ship to customers around the world. So companies like doTERRA, Young Living, all of these are our customers. They buy, what they do is they contact producers, local producers around the world, and they buy from them, which is why their products are really very good. Uh, I was talking a lot of these oils in Singapore and they were all for wholesale. So uh, sometime last year, I wanted to diversify, I wanted to do more. And uh, that's when we launched Oli in Singapore. Uh, because I wanted to expand the scope of our business and get into sort of the retail space. We wanted to help people get access to these great quality oils that we had. Um, so I personally do a lot of the purchasing myself. I travel to farms, remote areas. Back in the days when travel was a thing, I was traveling for like six months a year at least uh, because you're going into remote areas, going to farms, meeting the distillers, building those relationships. Uh, seeing, overseeing the production process and uh, making sure that you're getting it from the right source. So, and because we are so closely related to, cl closely connected to the source, and we have the lab facilities to test all, all of these oils, we know the industry, we know the practices that take place, and we know what the potential adulterants are. Um, it's 
uh, easy for us to source these oils at uh, reasonable prices and uh, offer that save offer those savings to the customer as well. Uh, so we have tea tree from Australia, frankincense from Somaliland, lavender from the Himalayan region, lemongrass from Kerala in India, uh, lemon from Spain, cinnamon oil from Sri Lanka. There's, there's a whole range, but that's something I'll let you guys check it out. Uh, we also, uh, as I was selling these oils, I realized that people, not everybody has the time and energy to sit down and do their DIY with the essential oils. So diffusing is great and using them as little tricks for like cuts and wounds and things like that is great. But uh, you also like, if you want a mosquito repellent, you don't have time to even make a mosquito repellent. So we started creating these things uh, and uh, we have, we sell a mosquito repellent that I personally, we've used, like we created it at home and we used to, my, my husband and I used to use it all the time because when we walk our dogs, we need something. Uh, I've been using it on my son since he was six to eight months old. So it's our own recipe. Uh, we launched a hand sanitizer, of course, um, and a yoga mat sanitizer, which doubles up as a fabric sanitizer, mask sanitizer. And we're looking at growing this range of sort of curated products, which we use, which uh, natural products made using essential oils. All of these products are made here in Singapore in this very office that I'm sitting in uh, and uh, where we oversee every aspect. So we know exactly what's going into the bottle. Our website is uh, www.itsolli.com, I-T-S-O-L-L-I-E. Um, and in fact, uh, I have a little discount code for the participants of this call as well. And uh, I'll put it in the chat in a bit uh, so that everyone can access it easily. Should we do, should we pause for questions? Yes, there are a few questions for you. Uh, one question is how to use Ravinsara. Did I say that right? Ravin yeah, Ravinsara. Ravinsara is actually, uh, I don't know the answer to that because that's not an oil that I've used personally. It's not an oil uh, that, I think it comes from the African region, if I'm not mistaken. Um, is it a tree, a plant? What is it? I don't know what it is. No, I don't know, but I can look it up for you. Okay. Uh, and this is- I'll um, come back to that question. Yeah, okay. back to that question. And this is a question about, so uh, for me, are, you, are your oils made in Singapore or are they produced somewhere else? So uh, the best place to, uh, if anybody tells you that our oils are produced in the UK or our oils are produced in Singapore, do not buy them, do not believe them. Uh, the best way, place to produce the oil is uh, close to the source of the botanical. So if roses grow in Bulgaria, uh, you know that roses are plucked in the morning and before night, if the oil is not made, they have to throw the entire batch of flowers away. Oh, really? Because, yes, because the flowers will fade. They will get brown and then the smell is going to be stale of the oil the next day. So when roses are made, they start their plucking at about when the flowers bloom at about five or six in the morning. And uh, the trick is to get as many pluckers as they can during the season to get the flowers by about 12 o'clock, they have to start their distillation because they're doing distillation in batches. So can you imagine transporting flowers from there to a different part of the world and then having to, uh, it's, it's yeah. not green, it's a waste of money, it's a waste of resources. <clears throat> because uh, trucks and trucks and trucks of uh, flowers will come down to maybe this much oil or maybe a couple of drums of oil. It's much easier to transport the drums of oil. So that's what I mean by sourcing it from different places. Tea tree is made in Australia. Uh, the cinnamon grows in Sri Lanka, which is why the oil is made there. Uh, lemongrass is cut and dried overnight. And then the next day, uh, the dried botanical is then distilled. So all of the distills, some of the things that are transported for distillation are trunks of wood. So sandalwood, Buddha wood, these things can be transported because you can stick wood in a container. It can dry over a couple of, you want it to be a little dry. You don't want too much moisture in the botanical. So a lot of times the botanical is dried. So peppermint leaves, peppermint leaves as well. They cut the field out and they leave the leaves on the field to dry. The next day they pick up, they scoop up all the leaves and then they take it to the still for distillation. So other than wood uh, being transported, anything else or resin, like in the case of frankincense, because now it's uh, just solid bits that nothing's gonna happen over time. And they're heavy enough that uh, it makes sense to transport. Uh, so then that's transported to maybe a factory that does multiple botanicals. So they, instead of setting up five factories, 
maybe we'll bring some of the stuff to that one uh, common point. Right, I see, okay. Uh, another one from Alice. She says, can you share a recipe for head lice in kids? Is there one? I, I, I think we did put one out on the blog. Can I look it up and if you can share your email address, I can send it to you. Yeah, I will. I will ask Alice to. Uh, I'll. I can forward it to Alice. I. I have yeah, everyone. Because I don't that, so. have one at the top of my head, but I think we have something out there that uh, is actually pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's one from uh, Ying, I believe. Oh, she was. It's her comment. I believe very little is produced. That's why most good quality oil costs a bomb. Yeah, they do cost a lot. <laughs> um, another Sorry. one from Lisa. Is castor oil good for hair loss, hair falls, or promote hair growth? Castor oil. I believe so. I believe so. Uh, I have very less hair, and my mother's after my life. She has been for the last 30 plus years. She used castor oil on my hair. But uh, castor oil is supposed to be really good for, uh, but it's also a very thick oil. So I would, again, use it in moderation. Uh, but I've heard that castor oil is supposed to be good for your hair. So you just massage it in your hair and let it sit for yeah. a while? I would dilute it, it though. I would dilute it a little bit uh, because it is a very thick oil. So uh, you don't want it to pull roots, especially if you have delicate hair. And uh, yeah. yeah, just do a massage it about an hour before you shower. Okay. Uh, and what about, you know, there are so many, there's so many skincare oils now in the market and what is it actually that is good for like you know keeping you young because i know i've seen so many especially on instagram like oh pear seed oil will keep you young and wrinkle free forever that kind of thing and i'm like a sucker for like marketing stuff so i'm like going like, <laughs> bye 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 uh, but then you don't really see any difference is that something that we need to be very careful about obviously what type of oils are good for skin care sandalwood is very 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 good for skin okay. um, sandalwood is really good i would add it in your face pack i would if you can get a sandalwood powder uh, mask or something i would get it uh, if you have a lot of uh, blemishes and so the reason your skin is aging is because of the acne problem um, tea tree is really good but again diluted so add a few drops into your face cream uh, as opposed to blotting tea tree directly on pimples okay that's good yeah. to know and that's good for teenagers so that's that's a good tip for yeah teenagers. yeah because it is it is antibacterial it is antiviral so Okay. I have a friend who's actually in the essential oil space. They're a very big brand in the UK. And uh, she, every time she eats candy, she gets a mouth ulcer. Oh. Uh, it's so strange. I've never seen this before. And every time she gets a mouth ulcer, she'll just take a little bit of tea tree on her fingertip. And she, as she, she was doing this to me as we were eating dinner. And uh, she, I mean, she was doing this as she, we were eating dinner. And I'm like, why are you applying tea tree directly into your mouth? She would take that some on your finger and just rub it on the ulcer. And it would burn for a couple of seconds, but she said, tomorrow morning, my ulcer is going to be gone. And okay. uh, I said, isn't she said, yeah, I would not recommend it to anybody. It is toxic and all of that, but it just works so well for me that I need to do it. But uh, again, this is a one-off. So you have to find your, uh, yeah. but for some others, I'm sure it might get worse. So you mentioned like not to put tea tree on wounds, right? Is that what I, you said I before? would not put tea tree directly, yes. I would yeah. have to teach you directly. Oh, on, right. Uh, okay. Because that's what my yeah. mother in law, she's from Australia. My mother in law is Australian. And she said, yeah, just put tea tree on everything. So just yeah. like put it on wood. And uh, it's super painful. So you, that's if you not go advisable. To, if you go to France, if you go to France, they're going to put lavender. I was in France and uh, we were a group of people. And my friend fell down and sort of cut his uh, finger, uh, cut his uh, hand a little bit. Uh, and this uh, French colleague of ours pulled out her roll-on from a bag. It was a lavender roll-on, and she applied it. She said, no matter what happens to you in life, apply lavender and you'll be okay. I'm okay. sure there are French people on this call and they agree, or they've at least heard of something. So uh, the reason all of these botanicals are great, if you go to India, it's going to be turmeric. If you go to Australia, it's going to be tea tree. All yeah. of these, but nature has <clears throat> so much to offer, and all of these have fantastic properties. So... It's also local to where you grew up and what is good for you. Uh, yes, yeah. tea tree. So I'm reading Michelle's question. Um, add it to your soap. 
Uh, you can add oil to sit on your face, it's fine, but like I would dilute it. You don't want to do it on with the carrier oil because if you have oily skin, uh, it'll make it worse. But uh, you have to find some, you could even add it in water, give it a good shake, and before the oil and water separate, just sort of uh, spray some onto your face. That's just close your eyes while you do it. That's one way to do it. Um, the other is just add some to your face cream and uh, apply it. That will help. That will help. Okay. There's one from Alice no, again. Not. Here's um, how do you know when your oil is rancid or even past the due date? Do they actually expire? They do expire. Um, okay. There are oils that can last you 10 plus years. There are oils that will not like, even last you 10 months. Uh, again, the trick is for them to make last longer is reduce oxidation and exposure to heat as much as possible. So you will know that. Uh, I mean, the one way to do it is to just uh, strictly go by expiry date, which like we do for most things. The other thing is if you are using the oil regularly, you will see that the color and or smell changes. So if something goes rancid, you can smell that it doesn't smell the way it used to okay. smell. And if you think that the smell is different, I would just, uh, but it should easily last you two years at least. Do you keep it in the Beyond fridge? Beyond the two, three years. I know some people who keep it in the fridge. I have so many oils at home, I don't have place in the fridge for it. So I just keep it in a shelf in a room that gets less sunlight. Okay, like in a cupboard or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but not so humid a space. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. But anyway, it's closed, the bottle is closed. So uh, humid is not so much of a concern. Heat okay. and lighter. Heat I see a question lighter. from Ying Sing, yeah. From Ying Ting, I'm not connected to the shop, but just to help people who are not sure where to get good quality essential oils, you can go to Esplanade, the Naturalist Grandeur. Uh, yes, I've been there and they have really good oils from the little bit that I've seen. Um, their quality is very good. Okay. Uh, yes, but their yeah. owner is very knowledgeable and helpful. Yes, I agree. Okay, I think that's... lavender is better than, sorry. Yeah, no, it's, it's, some people say, yeah, lavender is better. I guess that's what you said before. If you're from France, then lavender is be much better. If you're from Australia, tea tree is, is good and, you know, better. And yeah. I guess it's where you come from, right? India, turmeric. Yeah. At some level, you have to figure out what works for you. I think that's what I found because something that works for me may not work for you. Um, yeah. Yeah. And what about those blended oils? Do they work as well as, as just single ones? So I, I bought this, this uh, as I said, I'm quite sucker for marketing stuff. So there was this, uh, I saw this blended oil that says happiness, you know, so obviously I clicked and bought that and, you know, just like a little bit here, a little bit here. It smells delightful. Is that something, It does that work or? It's a big market and yeah. a lot of them work. A lot of them work. Um, but the trick with a blend is you don't know what they're putting in there. It's also a way to make money because mm -hmm. if I'm selling lavender, there's only so much I can play around with the price. Uh, but if I'm creating a blend, I can use a lot of cheap oils and price it at a hundred dollars because honestly, you don't know how much of what I'm putting in there. In some cases, they don't even tell you what the ingredients are. Make sure there are ingredients. Make sure, I mean, if you use it and you like it and it works for your mood, it makes you a little that wee bit happier uh why not yeah so lots of blends out there uh yeah. diffuse them see if you like it there's like blends for positivity blends for anxiety blends for yeah so it's, it's a big market yeah i bought a blend for um bugs it smells awful it's horrible so i don't know <laughs> it's like oh my god this blend is it's but it doesn't really you know, shy away the bugs. The bugs are still there, so you're probably right yeah. about. Um, yeah. And I'm I'm I like mean, a essential oil virgin, right? I don't know anything about it, so I always trust the label. But in this case, the label doesn't live up to what it said because I still got bugs. <sighs> but yeah. Yeah. So the I don't expect the bug blend to smell nice. Uh, you don't have to like it as long as the bugs don't like it either. But if the yeah. bugs are still there, yeah. But yeah, there are kind of still flying around. 
Um, but with the blends, with the roll-on blends, how long do they actually? For me, they don't really they don't really linger that long with the smell. So how long is the the smell supposed to linger around so that you can? It depends smell it? on the oil. So okay. uh, a lot of the oils are very volatile. If it doesn't linger wrong, long, that's probably a good thing because they're using pure oils. Uh, oils like frankincense, peppermint, uh, eucalyptus are very volatile, which means that they will evaporate really quickly. Uh, so if you smell a little bit of eucalyptus, and maybe half an hour later, one hour later, if you smell your wrist again, it may not be there, or it might be very, very slight. But if you look at uh, a cedar wood or a sandalwood, they have very less volatile compounds. So if you apply some on your wrist, um, three hours later, four hours later, you'll probably still smell it on your wrist. Okay. So uh, it depends on the oil. Um, and sometimes in a blend, if there's say a peppermint and a cedar wood, you'll find that it smells really nice because it's a nice emulsification of both oils. And over time, uh, if you go back to your wrist, you'll only smell the cedar wood more and the peppermint would have uh, gone, so. Yeah, okay. And in terms of cleaning, I'm quite interested in this. I'm a little bit OCD, so everything is like, and, and now obviously people need, are, need to be very, you know, cautious of yes. how they clean. And I, I know in your blog, you kind of have a few recipes on, on how to clean surfaces and things like that. And obviously you also have sanitizers and stuff. Which oil do you need to put on water so that it is... Can I say virus free? I can't say that because you can't really get it rid of oil in 100%. water. Yeah, or you know, just like in cleaning in general. For your like for your mop. Yeah, for for uh, for mopping so the floor use, or surfaces. I use uh, lemon. Uh, I use lemongrass uh, for the mop. You can add a little bit of tea tree along with that as well. Okay. Do you still add your soap or not? I would. I do add a little bit of soap. But I avoid the, the Clorox and the, all of that. I add a little bit of castle soap. Uh, you could even, what you could do is uh, take castle soap, like three-fourths of the bottle of castle soap, add a bunch of essential oils in it, give it a mix and keep it, and then tell your helper to add a little bit of that. If it's uh, concentrated castle soap, just add a little bit of, of that in the mop water. Uh, okay. So that way, uh, yeah, okay. it's easier cool. for them to do it. Fantastic. So Thank the, you so much. We saw that you, you, we saw you put the discount code on and, and the, the website of, of your blog. Your blog is on the website, right? Yes, it's it is part on of the it. website. Our shop okay. and our blog is all on the website. Uh, there's a code over there. I see one last question. What should be the proportion yes. when using tea tree with a carrier oil for acne? Um, I would say one drop of tea tree in a teaspoon of oil. Um, and if it's for your child, try it on yourself first. If you're comfortable with it, uh, then uh, use it. If you think it's too strong, then go two teaspoons. There's one question from Shirley, which I really like about cockroaches. Do you have the strongest recipe indeed to help dispel cockroaches? <laughs> we're actually going to come, come we're going to have an anti-cockroach spray out soon. Uh, I'm testing it right now. Uh, I don't know if the recipe needs tweaking or if it's good to go. So we should have something very, very soon. If you follow us on social media, uh, we're very active on Instagram. If you follow us, you, we'll give you updates on okay. uh, there. But meanwhile, what you can do is take bay leaves, uh, fresh bay leaves, and just spread them all over your kitchen if you're trying to get rid of cockroaches from your kitchen. Um, and they don't like the smell of bay leaves. So they'll you'll start to see them decreasing. And in a week, if they come back, you may need to just refresh your bay leaves a little bit. Bay leaves, right? Not pandan leaves, the, the pandan bay leaves. leaves the, bay leaves. Some like of the, the taxi the, drivers. The cooking bay leaves. Yeah, some of the taxi drivers use pandan leaves. awful. I, I think it smells not very nice. Uh, what, a, few, a few last questions. Um, Lisa, regards to my earlier query on castor oil for hair loss, would olive oil be better rather than castor? Lisa, could you drop me, sorry, could you leave your email address with us uh, so I can come back to you on the life and also on the castor oil? Yes, I will, I will forward you Lisa's um, email. 
And a few a few more uh, questions about ants. We have lots of ants in Peppermint. Singapore, obviously. Peppermint. 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 Right. Alice, right. you need to blast those ants with peppermint. <laughs> so they won't come back if you spray peppermint or put peppermint on the surface. So you obviously have to get rid of the root cause. If you're keeping cupcakes out on your kitchen shelf, then uh, that's not going to help. But uh, mix peppermint with water with a little bit of soap or just give it a good shake and just spray it around your kitchen counter after you've cleaned it and just leave it on for a bit. That smell, they don't like the smell. And what about lizards or geckos? What, what do they don't like? That's the one I'm working on because that's okay. the one I have a lot in my house as well. Um, yeah, I, I tried lemongrass, it didn't work. Uh, I'm, I'm trying something else now. So if it works, I'll come back to you and let you know. So we put something out on our social media or on our blog. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, I mean, Thank you so much. That is so informative. <laughs> uh, all the, the questions you've answered today, and I'm looking forward to going to your blog and, and getting all the recipes for for all the things that we need to be having in our life. Uh, I know my daughter's, for example, she has a sinus that kicks in like in the evening time, so it'd be great to have some sort of diffuser eucalyptus. to to help it. Eucalyptus. Okay, I'll uh, I'll do that. And um, thank you so much for you know sharing your so, knowledge with us eucalyptus for the sinus i'll leave uh -huh. you a quick one and lemon lemon eucalyptus for uh mosquitoes uh for those of you who have young kids and you use those mosquito patches i mean you can always buy our mosquito repellent but if not that you can uh, on your mosquito patch i you can make the mosquito patch long last longer so typically you'll find that the glue is intact but it's the smell of the patch that's reducing so just put one drop of lemon eucalyptus on that patch and you can reuse the patch for a couple of days or until the glue wears off or your child spills something on the patch and you need to change it. So that's really uh, helpful. But yeah, I, I, what, I, I'll also leave my email address on the chat. So if you guys have any questions, any follow-up, feel free to reach out and I'll be happy to help. Yeah, I, I'm going to share if, if uh, because a lot of people, um, are expecting the recording. So I'm going to send okay. the recording to people and I'm going to send them your details with the website and the offer and, and everything. So, so okay. everyone, if they have a, a question for you further down the line, they can just drop you a line, yeah? And Sounds follow good. you on social media, obviously. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us. And thank you so much, everybody, for, for joining us this morning. Have a, have a great afternoon and a great rest of the day. And take care. Thank you, Susan. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.